recording. What are you saying? Check, check. Koha Gua, my brother. Not on there. Back for another episode. Episode another 15 in the cup. You mm. know what I mean? Well, hey, it's, get, it's, hey, it's moving nice, you know. Mm. Moving nice. So, bigger all of those, man, on episode 14, 24 yeah. for 24. It's a good look, man, and let's hope they go on to do major, major things, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. How you been, though, man? How's your week been, bro? All right, still. Well, yeah, all right, man. Um, what done? I ain't really done. Ain't done. I'm trying to think. What done anything? Not really, you know. Kind of chilled. All right. Kind yeah. of chilled. So, have you ordered the T-shirts for us and that? Um, I haven't yet, you know. But you know what? By next week, it will sort that. So, so do I need do I need to send you like the the, the high pro, high resolution mm-hmm. logo or something? Yeah, yeah. Send me the um JPEG or PDF or something like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah. by next week, we can be rocking some t-shirts and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got pull your finger out, man. All right. So listen, this week's episode. Um, what are you saying? What do you, what what we got for what we got in store for them? This week, obviously, um, I feel like so far, obviously, we've had a lot of DJs, we've had hosts, we've had all sorts in it. So, I thought this week we should bring in some promoters, you know what I mean, and switch it up a little piece. And yeah, boy, they're, all, they're yeah. all a part of the industry, in it. So, yeah, that's oh. a good look. All right, cool. Hold on, we got one rolling up right now. Hold on, let's get the jump roll going. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, none. How you doing, fellas? How you doing, man? Fast for a second there, I thought you were wearing Barfist top, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. What are you saying, C6? You good? Yeah, yeah, man. Good, good, good. Nice to meet you, man. Introduce yourself, man. Let us know who you are. Likewise. Um, I'm Cash Buhari. Um, I... Well, I grew up in London, but now I'm based in the Midlands. Um, I've done events up these sides for like, Jesus Christ. I started in 2002, so almost 18 years. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, I've pretty much done some of the most, um, I don't even know how to say it. You know, you, I've, you I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. About yourself. You can't yeah. talk about yourself, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, 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 told, I told you what some, some of the reasons. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. I'm saying to myself, rah, kid, is that what's going on? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's, it's difficult to talk about yourself, man. And to be fair, I've always kind of like kept a very low-key yeah. uh, mentality. I do what I do and that's it. And I don't well, that's get, a good look, man. I don't, I don't get involved in any of anything else that's going on, man. I love that. I love that. Because you know what? To be honest, I guess there's, there's it's a, it, I reckon it's, it's a side to every single industry. If you get too big headed and you get too bossy with it, it can always have a knock on effect. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's good yeah. to stay humble and, and just know your talents, man. So big yeah, up, man. man. Yeah, get I just keep I've heard a lot man. about you. Yeah. So, and I've heard a lot about your events in the past. So it's nice to finally. Likewise, man. I appreciate that. Man. that. Yeah, man. All right. we, got an- we got another one rolling in first. We got another one rolling in. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> hey, hey, that was on time as well. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. It was on time, but. It, like he's not there. He's like not there, man. Like there. <laughs> that fashion, fashionably late thing, you know, like that. Let me see the expensive chair and that. Diamond, <laughs> diamond encrusted. You know, like that. has got a light. <laughs> he's got a light on his chair. I think that. I think that's one of the diamonds. You know, like the light shining off the diamond. Yeah, that's, the that's to show the clarity. That might even be a ruby. Or one of them <laughs> green, green emeralds or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically... Right, uh, see him there, Mr. Stamina's in the building. Can you hear us, bro? Yeah, yeah, he's he's audio connected. Okay. You want pre- you want uh, yeah, bro, it's finished now. No, I'm there thinking, what? The, I can't hear nothing. I like, see you lot in big conversation. I yeah, can't hear one thing. We was all chatting. You we were chatting about you still. Not like a feeling, you know, like my ears, <laughs> everything was burning and everything yeah, there, bro. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. All right, boom. Yeah, man. Yeah, All right, good. cool. Stamina's in the building. Hey, listen, introduce yourself, man, to the podcast. Boy, Stamina, promoter, entrepreneur, I'm here, innit? You know what? I'll tell you what. I'll tell, tell you what. i tell you what. I want to hear the old school intro. Now, this intro. You know what? The radio. 
Do you know, I can't remember. It was, I can't remember. It. You know, you no, remember I can't remember it. It was, it was, it was, it was, it's, it's the, the baby, your, the baby boy, no, stamina. Um, ah, oh, blah, he was saying, he was saying, simply the best, like you saying, Bo, um, he called himself, I can't, bro, you he, called himself he called himself the Floyd Money Mayweather of the entertainment. <laughs> of the radio, of the airways, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, no, yeah the, the, the Messi. <laughs> I think he said Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. You know, like he's no, just, just Messi. I'm team Messi. Oh, it, I'm team Messi. Messi. Okay, Messi, um, Floyd Money Mayweather. He called himself. What's the girl from that show? You know, the the, the lawyer woman. Oh, um, black oh. woman, man. The black lawyer lady, man. Olivia Pope. Yeah, no, Olivia Pope. Pope. Yeah. And, 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 and the list. Olivia, yeah. No, no, it's Olivia Pope. Olivia, Olivia Pope. Pope. Yeah. And he's like. Yeah, simply the best. I it's the sickest intro. It's like forty five <laughs> seconds. It's just the sickest yeah. intro. Do you know how I used to remember it? Because I used to always it started off short, then yeah. I would add on to it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I've oh, said it for oh. so many years, but I can't remember how that go again. So wait, so but why didn't you drop no one out? Like why like you know what when Messi came about, why didn't you drop out you saying? Like or like <laughs> or when or when because you were just you were the you Mayweather Bolt, Messi, Olivia Pope, like this is too many. Like this is, this you're, is you're pretty much just everything of the best. Yeah, yeah. everything, everything that was the best. That was, yeah. that was me when it comes to rain. Now you know, I rate that. You know, you know what? I was just saying. Some, I was just saying to Cash, it's good to be humble sometimes. But there's also a time for being bossy, you know. There's also a time for being mm-hmm. bossy. Now that is maximum bossy. Do you know what? Do you know what it is? I think you can be you can be bossy if you're kind of. Joke you if that makes sense. If you're not actually mm. too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. too serious, mm. if you're not too serious, and you know when to kind of show humility as well and be easy, yeah. then people will kind of kind of take take to it. But if you're, you're you see, really you arrogant, because I was saying thing. like our industry, especially for black promoters, yeah. Yeah. you don't want to show the other side. Even if you want to, you don't want to show the other side because the moment you do, people start hating and be like, you know what, I'm giving him too much money. I'm not going to his rate. <laughs> it's a country. It's, it, it's true. I do I have noticed that people judge promoters. Um, if you if you come across stingy or you come across just all about peas, mm-hmm. yeah, like people act funny. It's but it's mad because that is what we we know if we give them. If we get, if we look after the promoter, the promoter looks after us. That's what people know. That's why when we go to the West End clubs, we go to mm-hmm. the best clubs. We pay the most money for the drinks. Mm-hmm. You know, like these big festivals, you pay the most money for the tickets. Mm-hmm. It's only when it comes to our people that mm-hmm. we start looking at that in the reverse. Yeah, yeah. 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 How, how much you get in? How much? What? Twenty pounds. Twenty pounds. <laughs> they're yeah. paying. They're paying a hundred pound. They're for putting a concert, it down, bro. For a concert. Where they're gonna mm. where they're gonna sing all the lyrics for the artist. Mm-hmm. You know, you know mm. what's you know what's mad with our with our people. It's like mm. with our people because we because we look like them and we come from where they come from. Mm. It's like they want the they want the British Airways level of professionalism. <laughs> yeah, yeah for the for the for the little for the little money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're you're saying that you're saying they they want they want they want British Airways on a, on a, on an easy jet budget, yeah. Yeah. Little, yeah. Not even easy. Not even easy. Yeah. Little. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. They want the highest level of professionalism possible. Yeah. They want the most quality they could ever have in yeah. life, and they feel yeah. no way to tell you how unprofessional this is and what they yeah. eat, you know, what they want and how it should be. But when it yeah. comes to paying the money now, mm. they don't want to pay the proper money. Yeah. Like they're happy to pay but, like nothing, but that goes both ways, though. I'm gonna you know lie. I think... How can I have an event? <laughs> I, I had an event at my comedy club where it was it was either free before free before seven thirty or like one pound before seven thirty. Yeah. So the most this couple would have paid was two pounds. That's the most they would have paid. <laughs> I can't remember it's free. It's a pound at night. Yeah? But they came in. Before the time, paid their little pound or whatever not, or got him free. Then they got stopped and said, okay, you know, you have to put your, your coat in the cloak room, mm-hmm. yeah? And it's a, it's, it's a pound, yeah? Do you know that there was, that was a problem? And it was a big, like, discussion mm-hmm. and argument 
as to why they should have to put their coat down and they shouldn't have to put their coat down if they, if they don't want to and we're just doing it because we want to get money out of them. And you know what? You're standing there thinking, I swear you just paid a pound to get in here. Mm-hmm. Like you paid a pound. <laughs> but still yet, you want to argue if that makes sense. Still yet, you have a, you have a problem an issue and you've got a whole comedy night you're going to go and see with name brand comedians slim and them man there yeah yeah but it's still an issue and that's I just something the problem right? yeah I, I definitely know you see with the cloakroom thing yeah i've this this you lot might be able to answer my question also yeah why do you want people to have to put their coat in the cloakroom have to you know to like no one is a no option it's a have to i'm not i'm not i'm not bothered I'm, to be honest, I'm not bothered. Unless the club enforces it, yeah, and it's for the majority reason, I don't care. Mm. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. But if the club enforces that, and it's, it's something that they have to do, then it's between them and, and, and the security. However, if it's my night, then, mm. then it's me. Like I'm, I'm putting it. Mm. You see, the, the problem with that, or in general, why sometimes we kind of get that problem mm. within our community, and I, I don't want to make this about or oh, our black people do this, blah, blah. Ooh, yeah. It's because we, we are very much accessible. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is why sometimes when I do my night, I'm not accessible. Ooh. Most times people, I fat, fat will probably tell you, most times people don't even know who cash is. People are actually standing yeah. next to me talking about cash. You don't know who the face is. Yeah. But I make it where I'm not accessible. My team is accessible. You can talk to whoever, it, it's accessible. But me, I am not accessible. When I'm not accessible, you can't come to me and complain. You can't, you can't make it an issue. If you go to Wireless fe- Festival... Yeah, you don't know who that is. It's Live Nation. Live Nation is not accessible. You want to complain, you go on the internet and you basically send an email or you contact Twitter um, or wh- however else you want to do it. But they're not accessible. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing, for example, Afro Nation, where you got yeah. Live Nation involved and then you got yeah. Smith. The biggest mistake Smith made yeah. was when everything was rosy, he put his face on it. So yeah. now, when shit hit the fan, yeah. even though Smith is not a majority owner and he's just a part owner of it, yeah. and it's he's Live back. Nation, but he's getting the backlash because mm-hmm. he's not accessible. Hold on a minute. Check, check. James, you in the building? Yeah, what's up, man? You good? Yeah, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. E- evening, guys. All right. Evening, mate. Right. Right. Are you looking like you're in the dark room there, James? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking fresh, though, man. We say fresh trim and that. Barber's open Saturday. Yeah. I was there. Right. I am yeah, telling I you, there. listen, it's been, it's been the grisliest of, of months for us, man. Yeah, so. I weren't ready for the Zoom parties and no, no barbers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Barbers right now on Yemen. Barbers on Yemen. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait for us to start in Yemen again. But the yeah, man are key, are key workers. Trust yeah, me. Right now they're key workers. All right. So, welcome to the um the podcast. As I said at the beginning, um, wanted to get the promoters on. Now there's a lot of promoters that we respect and rate. So um, big up all of the promoters out there. But you three in particular have stood out to us as mm. people that are doing great things and um, your events pop, whether in this country or not, you know, and the, the range of events that you lot put on from award shows, comedy shows, big uni bar crews, all sorts of stuff like this, it's, it's admirable. So we definitely want to get your point. So um, thanks for, for, for passing through. Deck mm. one, deck two, you know what I mean? Your boy Flats and I. But yeah, so... um. We don't really want to um, beat around the bush, so we just want to just get straight into it. I want to mm. know, yeah, for you, from your guys' perspective, how COVID-19 has affected you and how you see yourself coming back from, from it. Like, what is your plan for... You don't have to break down your, 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 your master plan, but, like, what is your plan to get back in the game or to get, to get the ball rolling? So... Uh, well, you know what? For me, it's affected. It's affected me in a major way because the whole scene's on pause, and it just like it's affected all the promoters, all the artists, DJs, acts, venues, theaters. Like the whole game is just on pause. It's on lock. So it's affected what we do day to day in a major way. But I guess because the whole world is going through the same thing, 
you can kind of understand it and place it in the right place. It's not like you're not feeling too hard done by like, you know, it's you one who's being affected. The whole world's going through it. So you're kind of somewhat numb to it. But obviously if you take away the way that we make a living, the way that we feed our family, it's always going to affect us in a, in a major way. It's what we do. But then for me, on a, on a personal day-to-day level, it's been kind of funny because like for the last three, four months, like personally inside of me, I felt like, a waste man. I felt like a bum, just like just in my pajamas on my sofa, like <laughs> watching Netflix. Like I feel like I feel like them man there in their thirties who's still trying to get their rap career off the ground and begging their woman for <laughs> to be trimming them kind of thing. Like, that's it. That's what I feel like right now. Cause I'm a, I'm a workaholic. I'm a workaholic. So I don't know anything else but working and grinding mm-hmm. non-stop. Mm-hmm. And as much as there are little things that we can do, like within that field, if we haven't got other business interests but it's kind of like when you don't actually know when live events can start again or when club events it's very hard to work when you don't know what day you're working towards so it's Mm. like i've got certain when when the event got sorry when everything got locked down yeah i was kind of just about to put out advertising for for one of my tours that was in like one of my comedy tours that would have been in like 11 cities yeah and those dates have all been postponed like about three times now. So I postponed them the first time, pushed them back a couple of months, booking my dates. I've had to postpone them for a second time. I've now had to postpone them like just last week, postpone them for a third time. But it's like, in between those times, I didn't go to my designer and say, yeah, change the dates on the, on the flyers or whatever. No, I didn't even go to the comedians and say, yeah, these are the new dates. This is this, this is that. It's like, I just, I haven't been able to work. I haven't been able to do nothing. I haven't been able to motivate myself to do certain things because I don't actually know if it's yeah. going to be able to happen or not. So it's like, it's mad though, because I should have done. At certain times I'm sitting there thinking, cool, I need to hold my design, I need to do this, but I just can't literally motivate myself to do it because I haven't mm. got a, a categoric date where I know mm, this yeah, is yeah. taking place. So all the, yeah. all the usual promo strategies that I would put in place and the dates that the radio ads got to be on, the date that this has got to be on, mm. like I just ain't been doing none of them because I don't know when anything's going to open up. Hey. Like, I, I, I doubt very much anything is going to get back, especially for our industry, anything is going to get back. And I'm predicting anyway, for me, February, March of next year. I think anything before that is very unlikely. But that's, that's just my assumption. I mean, for me in general, again, just like yourself, um, Stamina, like everything is on pause. So none yeah. of us are making money. Like events make 60% of my business. So with nothing coming in, it's like, it's, it's it, like nothing. You see what I'm saying? Um, however, it's funny though, because for me, it's like, I've really embraced this last three months. Like, and I say I've embraced it because I'm learning every new skill set. Like I've kept my routine. It's like, if I wake up at six o'clock in the morning, sort out the kids or whatever, my wife helps me sort out the kids. It's like, yo, when I get on my laptop, from like 10 most times i don't basically get up till about 9 10 o'clock at night i'm That's doing true. like i've literally everything that i felt i've researched every other market that i felt like i needed to um, research because obviously we were planning on launching um getting back into the international um clubbing scene this year and we've postponed that so it's like but some of the um the locations that i wanted to go i'm seeing everybody else popping up there mm. and like Anybody that knows me like knows I'm like, I like to do things differently. So now it's like I've gone back to the drawing board. I'm researching different markets. I'm, I'm like literally finding those phone numbers. I'm calling promoters or um, venue owners that are there. I'm finding the mobile numbers. But I've literally kept busy um, just so that mentally I don't lose it. Because like yourself, it's like I'm on the go. I'm on the go and I'm a people's person. It's like, I feel like I need to go talk to you and like do this and do that. And then it's like, yo, nothing. So I've kept myself busy. Um, But in terms of finances, money coming in, nothing, bro. Like absolutely nothing. If anything, we're spending. We're spending. Because now it's like the the cost of living, everything has gone up. You you don't realize until you have four, four or five people living in a household and now they have to have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a mm-hmm. food having the snacks and everything. Mm-hmm. For me. It's like, yo, the shopping, the food shopping is just got off the roof like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. But 
Uh, I think I think for us it's 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 all, it's it's how we manage this period. Um, and like you said, um, Damien, like just not being able to sit down and feeling like a bum. So for me, I've just kept my routine. I've I've tried to be very active all the way through. Yeah, that's a good look, man. James, I think for me, the first part of the lockdown, I kind of welcomed the rest. Mm. I've been basically nonstop for like ten years, and mm. when you work for yourself, you tend not to give yourself holidays or breaks. There's always something to do. There's always a move mm-hmm. to make. There's always growth. Mm-hmm. So I think the imposed break has been good to like reset, recharge. And I basically use this to like expand my networks. So mm-hmm. like Cash was mm-hmm. saying to do the one-on-one promo. So conversations that I would normally not have time for mm-hmm. to kind of expand my personal brand and get people to know the man behind the brand because mm-hmm. i believe when people buy into you they buy into your business mm-hmm. so there's a reason yeah. why richard branson has more followers than virgin because people know him and then they mm-hmm. support his brands as a result so i've been kind of working on on that aspect and yeah just trying to learn aspects of the business um because some stuff we do just naturally so just learning more about online marketing, about um, advertising strategy, mm. um, kind of stuff like that. Just taking time that I would not normally have when you're moving at 100 miles per hour. And, you know, as a promoter, you're always living in the future. So it's like you've got an event coming up, but then you might have something three months down the line, six months down the line. And you can't, sometimes you can miss the here and now. So it's been a welcome yeah, break. And yeah, I'm not sure when it's going to get back to normal, but I think there's always going to be opportunities that pop up um, um, that, yeah, that, that can give us work and give us a vocation and things to do. Mm. No, I respect that. That's, that's, that's a really good take on things. But even myself, like I tried to, I thought, wow, this, let me just learn some new stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And a um, little fitness journey. Big up my brother, <laughs> big up my brother's stamina. That's helped um, me in this little cycle club. But, um, li- there's so many little things that you just think, oh, let me- I can try that now. Let me read that book that I've been putting off, or you know, let me start. If you know, this podcast was born during this period, even though mm. we we planned to start it beforehand. Yeah. Like, we-, we had the logo and everything set up from like when, perhaps what December or something. Like we were ready to go, mm. and then um, but it's just it's just it was just born at this time. Do you get what I'm saying? So there's so many things that happen. If yeah. You have to allow it to happen. You've got to embrace it. So that's a good look. Um, do you think yeah, that obviously people, the, the people obviously are starving for events. They're starving for So <laughs> DJs have gone crazy and doing online, online, online. Some DJs have done more online than they've ever done in their career. Mm-hmm. Like, which, you know, more power to them if they're seizing the opportunity. That's great, but like some D, like the Instagram live has made a set. Of, some DJs are bust on Instagram live. Oh, right. I feel like their future is gonna be strong based on what they put out, and some haven't, and they run the risk of being forgotten. Because it's Do like you know what's it's like Do you know a what's new world. That, yeah? yeah, I was having a conversation with someone a couple of days ago mm. about the exact thing you're talking about, mm. and I'll say like we were basically saying that like we're really curious to see if when everything comes back, mm-hmm. if, like, the people who've had really big success on, you know, the Instagram Live, and maybe mm. people didn't know about them before, but they know about them now, if it's going to mm. benefit them once everything comes back, or if we're just going to revert to time. Yeah, can, so they, convert can they convert it? Or can they convert it? Or can they convert it? So there's certain house DJs who were doing, yeah. they're doing big things on the IG Live or whatever, not. yeah? Okay? But when it comes back and a promoter's booking, are you still booking the big man, man them like Super you, D and them man? Is that still the default? Or are you going to book some of them man who had big followers on IG Live or doing things so it just revert back to time? Uh, no, this, 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 about, this is about you guys as the promoters. This is like... Yeah, so you but, that. You right, so, it's a bums on seats thing. So, okay, for me, yeah. someone, someone like Lani yeah. will capitalise on it. Yeah. And I think he's doing that already. However, it's about not risking and burning out yourself, doing too much in every way. Someone like someone like Lani will capitalize on. Yeah, it. he's winning right now. Um, absolutely. 
Um, and you got someone like there is this your um, what's that DJ from Birmingham called? The, what's his name? Oh, the one that was doing the Continental house. DJ. Continental. Yeah. This thing is busting. Yeah. Um, you got DJ Quams, who again, who is at a uni, uni scene that does Afro beats. Um, Quams, um, Quams original rather. Okay. Um, I think he he will within the uni scene. I think he will capitalize on it because he's done a fantastic job. You've got certain DJs that have solidified their brand from mm. doing IG Live. Mm. But however, you've on the flip side, you've got some you got certain DJs that were established. Yeah, that have now ruined the brand from yes, IG Live. hundred. Because as a promoter, I'm not. How would you lie. say they ruined it though? How would you? How do? How the promoter say? Okay. How would they ruin their brand? Okay, not ruin the brand. No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, how do I you think? Know? I think. Yeah, I think some people. I think what I was brand. what I was trying to say is like they haven't they haven't add value to it, and if anything, they depreciate their value. Okay. That they have but beforehand how? because you, you can you can uncover you can listen. It's like it's just like. Um, you, uh, the perception of you, you go into the rave, you shut mm -hmm. down the rave. The perception mm -hmm. of you is up here. Yeah. IG live now. You come on IG live. You don't even have the right equipment. You, you, you're at your camera angles off key. You're mm -hmm. playing tunes and you're just, mm -hmm. you're just not connecting with the people. You've yeah. got 10 people watching you. They're like, raw. is that the big man? Well, that affects well, you, bro. Well, it affects well, you. Well, it, though, but on the flip side though, yeah? What mm -hmm. you have to also understand, the IG live is technically like doing radio. Some people really are right? not built for the radio. I, yeah, yeah, but that's, where, that's where it affects you, though. But it, see, but you know, what it, but I, I'll be honest with you, yeah? yeah. Like when I look at like if, like just like I mentioned, just like Super D and the originals, man, them or Pioneer, yeah. Yeah. The, the Invasion Crews. So these people have been doing a lot on IG live, yeah. All of those lot, I would say, are a hundred percent certified. Get enough mm -hmm. bookings. Like they're big in the business, like the top of the top of their game, and the top of their yeah. scene in terms of getting bookings, yeah. And they've all been doing good IG lives, but even mm. if they, even if some of their IG lives are a little bit shaky, yeah, I really feel that somewhat everything that happens in this time is mm. somewhat, it's not even it's not even reality. It's just like a, a little like fantasy a world. bubble we're living in for the moment. Like but bubble, when, yeah, it, yeah. when it get back to normal. I think that everything will revert back to type, if that makes sense. I think when we I go agree. back to normal, like, ah. like J James is on James is on this um this live now, yeah. And when it comes to kind of you know the the kind of on trend raving scene right now, the city, whatever not, he's the boss of that right now, yeah. Mm. But when 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 the scene comes back and he's doing that on trend for the the twenty five year old ravers who are partying now every weekend, whatever not, yeah. Like he knows who is. It's hitters up. I don't yeah. think they're yeah. but as a promoter, are you gonna turn around and yeah. say, nah, you know what? Let's say invasion was shaky, even though they weren't, they've been on point, like big up Todd's, big up MJ. But let's say hypothetically they were a bit shaky on the IG live. James, you're gonna turn around and say, Boy, you know what, even though invasion been tearing up my raves certified for the last 10 years, all of a sudden, because so and so from down the road been busting up IG live, I'm gonna rest off invasion and bring in my man. Well to answer, to answer your question, it goes both way so you can see someone busting up IG live who might not have necessarily had a bigger um a big name or a big brand before but I think all of us as promoters we don't we might hear a mix CD and it will intrigue us to a DJ but when you're picking a lineup or a comedian or whoever you want to see them live you want to see mm -hmm. how they interact with the crowds because mm -hmm. like facts were saying yeah there's radio DJs and there's club DJs so mm -hmm. when you've got the pressure of a crowd in front of you and you have to read them and you have to interact with them you, that doesn't convert for you can't look at someone on IG and think wow they're going to shut down my rave of I course. might be more I might be more um aware of them and then go to find um out where I can hear them so I can see how they yeah. but I think it, it still comes down to how we've always done it which is see them perform live mm -hmm. and then decide can they rock my yeah, crowd he, the way I need it. Right. Need right. So let me ask you a question. Sorry, uh, sorry, Cash, yeah? Mm -hmm. The reason I say this, yeah, because when you have a shift in reality, because we have a shift in reality right now. Yeah. So the way of booking people and the way of doing things has changed. Just yeah. like, just like comedians, yeah? Yeah. There are comedians right now that are on IG that do their little jokes that have hundred thousand followers yeah and the traditional stage comedian has 800 followers 
Yeah. When you're trying to pull people to your rave, you go for the IG man, even though he's nowhere near as funny on stage as the man. Do you get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that is what pulls. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I do believe when we get back into the, the scene, it, it may not last, but in the, in the first instance, mm. the guys who are, are prominent during lockdown will be at the forefront. They'll be at the front of the queue. And you promoters that have got a lot more, um, you promoters that have got a lot more um, experience and certified brands that people trust may revert back to the old way. But you see the new, the new ones and the ones who are starting a thing, they're going for what's hot. The, the, mm. you, Stamina just used the word on trend. If you're yeah. going by on trend, you got to go by who's been busting for the last two months. That's trend. Well, I'll you say I'll say this. Um, one of the one of the DJs mm. that I've I've not booked, mm. I've heard of, and have not because most of the time when I book a DJ, I have to see them play, mm -hmm. and I haven't had the time to see this person play. But through IG Live, they made such a lasting impression on me. And I've said, the moment I get back and I'm doing a certain rave, I will book them. And that was DJ Fifi. Ooh. I've, I've, not, like, I've not seen Fifi play before. But when I watch him on his IG, even if he's got three followers or 100 followers um, watching his IG, the energy he brings yeah. to, that, to, that, um, to that live, um, the end. Oh Jesus Christ! Sorry, my, my phone thing off, went off. The um the energy he brings to that live. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The energy he brought to that live was so was so incredible. And I looked at it. I'm like, you know what? Like, nah. You are someone. If I book you, I know you're gonna show down my rate. So it works. It works on both sides. But then there are certain DJs that I know. I will always count on to deliver. Yeah. Like Cosmic doesn't need to do IG live, but I know when it comes to hip hop set, if I need if I need some certain type of DJ, I can book a Cosy. He's Ooh. gonna smash it for me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like Pox or, or like, but they're certain DJs. Like like you like you were saying, Invasion Crew. Like you already know what they're capable of. They don't need to do IG live, but they do no, IG live because they're marketing themselves, and that helps for the next promoter that might want to book them that have never seen them do it before. Yeah. So that's, do you know what it is for me? Do you, know what, do you know what it is for me, yeah? I'm, and I actually don't even know the answer to this one. Like, it's kind of, remember, this has never, ever happened before. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm as curious to see what's going to happen as, as anybody else. But it's like, part of me feels like, you see, when it comes to DJs and playing out and a career you built, it's like, I really don't know if a lot of what is going on at IG Live, I don't know how much people are gonna retain it. I don't know if like people are actually becoming fans and followers of certain people or if it's just something to pass the time for the moment. When and when everything comes back to normal, yeah, and if you put two flyers in front of me, yeah, and you see uh, one flyer that's got four or five DJs who were all tearing up the IG live and people was thousands of people watching them like yeah. and another flyer has got four or five DJs who maybe weren't as hot on because see you haven't been doing the IG live that much so you got you got yourself on it and, and certain other DJs like if I call out some of the names but some of these guys have been doing it but like you haven't been doing it that much I haven't seen Celebra Celebra ain't really been doing it that much that I've, I've, I've really seen and let's say it was like even an invasion and top cats, for example, even though they have been doing it, if they've got those two flyers in front of them, like, will people just revert back to what they know? Like that one on the right hand side with C and invasion and celebrating them man there, that's yeah. going to be the Shellings rave. Because for the last 10 years of my raving career, when I go to events with those man, it's always ram, it's always a good time. I know they're this. I know. Do people just revert back to type? Or they say, no, I remember two months ago when I was in my bedroom skanking to this brother over here yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. a thousand other people and a couple of lights going on in the background and that things there. So I'm going to that one. Like, I mean, you, as a promoter, you have to find the balance though, don't you? Yeah, I think you have to who, who you put on the lineup to make as sure. As a promoter, yeah, I'm thinking about, I'm just thinking, what are the, what are the customers going to, I'm not even talking about the, the promoter right now. I'm the, looking at what, what are the customers going to resonate to. The target customer as well because, um, comes down to, who you marketing to and who like who the who your rave is basically um being done for because yeah. you can have invasion 
on one flyer knowing that they're going to target you going they're going to attract a certain man's but you can have a super nitro and live link on the next flyer sorry not so i mean super nitro and um lani on the next flyer yeah. in the most straight away the clientele and the demographic that's going to come out so mm -hmm. like you can you can you and i can easily create two type of flyers with djs that have been shelling it on insta and that also shell it outside of insta and we're going to attract two different clientele yeah, definitely, definitely. You know what I mean. So I think, I think, I think it all comes down to how the promoters um put it put it across in the mar the market that they're trying to target. So, all right, could I ask you a question? Yeah, a different question. Um, so obviously, just as I was saying, it's very similar to what's happening with DJs. Um, you know, there's some guys on IG lives. Um, there's some opportunists that have just become DJs. I've seen some people that have not. It, well, it's, it's all power to everyone, you know what I mean. But I've seen some man. <laughs> jump on this dj thing recently but so you know what i mean some people you know oh, i've been wanting to do it for for ages okay <laughs> do your thing, do your thing. but what i've also noticed now because people have been so desperate to party that now the same thing is happening with events mm. there's a park event every, every day. single day every, like, single, every day. single day yeah. block block parties, parties. house parties street parties I just done a party on Saturday um, in some mansion, and like, so, but uh, just to show you that I'm very. So you happy. actually did it, yeah. Of course, I did it. I did it, but I um, I was booked. It was a uh, above board as social distance from myself, especially you know my booth away from people. You know, I kept the rules, but I needed to pee, so I went for it. Yeah, you know I mean, but um, yeah, yeah. It was a good look, but the fact of yeah. the matter is, ram. People want a yeah. party, so. What I'm basically getting at is, okay, do you feel that the 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 raving scene, the party scene, is shifting? Do you think that parties every single day will have a knock-on effect? Just like how I believe that the DJs will have a knock-on effect. Are we changing the landscape of partying? I, I, you know I mean, from your opinion, like, yeah, James, you, yeah, from your yeah, opinion. I don't think it's changing. I think it's more an adaptation. So... Mm -hmm. What you learn, what we learned in the in the lockdown was obviously DJs and promoters aren't key workers, and that's fine. But when you look at the way the people are thirsty for events, it's not so much the mm -hmm. events; it's more the community, mm -hmm. seeing people, being around, being social. Like mm -hmm. humans have an inherent need to be social and around other humans. Mm -hmm. um, they want to hear live music. They want to hear DJs live. Like the Zoom things were cool. To, to, to an extent but i think that just wet people's appetite more for the real yeah. thing mm -hmm. so i think as things stand now people are just going to go wherever there's a crowd or wherever there's something going on mm -hmm. when things get more back to normal um and you can kind of see it over the past few weeks so um the block parties that happened this weekend were a lot quieter from what i saw because bars are now open restaurants are now open so they people can still do social things so i think as more stuff starts opening up in terms of venues then mm. i think the park things they'll still happen but not on the same scale because oh, let's, let's be honest people do appreciate having security people do appreciate having mm. toilets oh, um, they, do, they do appreciate going to an event knowing it's not going to get like locked toilet. up early <laughs> Yeah. so it's um yeah i think um they're a good substitute for now and i think they will have a place for those type of people that want those unofficial block party street party things but generally they're just um they're yeah, fillers. They're just sub. Yeah, yeah they're fillers yeah yeah okay i appreciate that i appreciate that you know what it is i feel like if, like people like people will do anything from it's free yeah from it's mm. free people will jump on it. So I don't think people are any more like eager now to go out than they would be like if six months ago or if a year ago, like Cash has got his following, he's big in his thing. James has got his following, he's big in his thing, if that makes sense. If James turned around a year ago and said, you know what, lovers and friends, rock or park, Saturday, free entry, invasion, dead air, C6 dead air, it would have been sell off a year ago. Mm. It would have sell off 18 months ago. Two, like it would have been sell off if no one would have to pay. And the right people behind it, it's going to be sell-off, if that makes sense, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But as soon as things open up and the promoters can make money again, none of these promoters ain't going to be doing no free thing in the park mm -hmm. or down the road from my house. Like, they're not going to be wasting their time and energy 
doing that when they can now be going to proper clubs and proper venues mm. where it, it's legal what they're doing. Right now, what everyone's doing is illegal. So when it's legal and they can actually make money, like, yeah, yeah. these things are not going to be taking place no more. So it's not going to change the landscape because no one's wasting their time doing an illegal event in a park, a quick string up, when the police can turn up any minute when you could be hiring your proper club or your proper venue and making your proper money. So mm. they're, they're not going to stay. They're not going to stay. You see, the, bi- the business-minded promoters will not, will not do what you're saying. Um, they will, like, uh, like you're saying, the business-minded promoters will end up going to the clubs and using proper venues and proper avenues to do their thing. Mm. The promoters that are, the, that are here for the clout and everything else, there's going to be a rise in, in house parties there's going to be a rise in it. Like, that's, for my research anyway, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, it's going to go back similar to what it was just before the last recession or just around that time where there was a, a rise in house parties. Yes, there was still um, the nightclubs and stuff because that's what Linquini came through. Mm. And that era is going to come back where it's like you're going to have people going to the house parties because... We're looking at it from a point of view where it's like, think about how many people are losing employment right now. At the end of this, when we go back, not a lot of people are gonna have enough, are gonna have money to go spend on social things, such as going out raving or going out to the clubs or the pubs and all that kind of stuff. They're gonna pick and choose where they go. So most of the time, if they can basically have a party in the shoes, or a little house party and basically bring the drink when they can basically drink unlimited without yeah. whatever, that's what they're going to revert to. So I reckon there's going to be a rise in house parties. Yeah. I reckon it'll be, yeah. I reckon there'll be, there'll be some like, someone like myself, the house party, like James said, the security thing, that works for me. Yeah, yeah, 100%. There's no, no smoking in the venue, that works really works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be able to go piss when I want. Yeah, that works for me. So yeah. you, you know what I'm saying. So it, I guess yeah, I guess it because I haven't been to a street party, and it's not because I just don't really want to go. Like it's not mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm not scared of people. I just don't really want to go. Nah, it's not mm-hmm. my thing, not a real. And oh, I haven't sh- actually seen sh- one that looks litty that makes yeah. me say, oh, I, the next one I'm there. I haven't seen mm-hmm. that yet. Mm-hmm. So I do I have, most- I do have a need to want a shelf. I, I like I want it, yeah. but there's nothing. That has made me say, "Raw, like, nah, that day I wish I was there." So far, but you know, do you, know, do you, do you, feel, do you feel like, do you feel like you might still want to go to a, to a street party or um, or house party, knowing so well that this virus thing is still kind of out there? Bro, does, see, it, does it does it does it see the virus thing? Concept? See the virus thing? Like, I'm like, I think I got bipolar, yeah, because sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I'm bang on this conspiracy thing, like, bun this, this is, a, this is all a setup. And then sometimes I'm like, rah, they're not keeping their distance. Like, <laughs> like, I'm proper bipolar with it. Sometimes I'm straight conspiracy. And then sometimes I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's no, there's no distance. Yeah. Well, that, that's like me when I go to the shop, man. Yeah, it's true. I'm thinking, why is this person so close to me, man? I'm trying to give you space. Move yourself, bro. Strange. It's strange. But yeah, that's a good look, man. That's a good look. I, I do I do look forward to um I do look forward to getting back into the clubs and, and playing that. My the first I tell you what, the first night in the club, I am going to one dance. I'm not doing a bag of bookings. I'm going I'm taking one booking and I'm jamming. I'm doing whatever set, but I'm gonna be there the whole night because I'm gonna embrace that. I'm taking that in. I'm not mm. just driving around thing, I'm mm. not in it. I will say. I was very lucky to have the last event of the year so far. Big up, Jay. <laughs> me and Jay. Yeah. Big up, Jay. Like it was, that's a, literally the last event of the year was my birthday bash, and um, so I was lucky for that. Um, money done long time, so I'm waiting to have a next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a couple. I got. I got. There's a question I want to ask you guys, and I've always thought about this because even myself as a DJ, yeah, I put on a few events. I put on a few events. Um, so, like, the silent disco event got quite big. Um, I've put on a few events that I've got to a decent level. Um, how do you guys feel about DJs being promoters? I, I honestly sometimes believe that, you know, we should leave things to other people. So, even though I do it myself, I don't want to come across as a hypocrite, yeah, you, yeah. Must, you know, but I do believe there are some things 
that we should mm. let because a good promoter puts on a much better event yeah than a dj but it's, it's just like almost what you said though it's like it's like the guys that have now started djing mm. that like you know i don't know they was a comedian mm. they were a host they were a whatever but obviously in this time that thing's gone so now they're stepping into the other realm, innit? Mm. Yeah. And I believe probably a lot of DJs even think like, come on, bro, like, this is our field, innit? Like, why are you just yeah, yeah. stepping into that field just randomly, innit? Mm. Um, I'd be, I don't, I'd, be, I'd, be a bit of a, I'd be a bit of a hypocrite to have an issue with it because, you know, that's kind of my background, if that makes sense. I mm. come from, you know, being the DJ and the host in the place and entertaining the people to kind of natural progression and, transitioning to kind of being a promoter but I kind of I kind of more or less started both at the, at the same time to be honest so I started I, like oh, not really so in my younger days obviously grew up in the sound man world my dad was a sound man all the cousins were sound man so I've been doing it for as as long as I can remember but when I actually kind of became stamina in terms of a couple of people kind of knowing about me and being on a couple of flyers and and those kind of things I more or less started promoting from those days anyway. Mm. Like, so I've been promoting since my, since my teens. <clears throat> so I was always kind of doing both alongside. So even as I was growing and getting known as, like from the MC days, from the garage days, when I was on, on, on Choice FM, every Wednesday with Commander B and them things there, mm. like from those days, I was always still promoting and kind of entrepreneurial since then. But because I have done both oh. for other DJs to kind of, you know, take a natural progression into promoting and see, you know what, I've got a good following, people like me, how can I, how can I monetize this um, by way of events? I, I don't think you can really have it, have an issue with it. You might just think, oh, damn, that's another, that's more competition now. Yeah. Um, but I don't think you can really have an issue with it. I remember it, it changed probably, I remember there was a shift probably about, in 2008, I would say, in 2008, there was a shift. I can't remember, James would have to tell me when, when, when him and his team first kind of got, got involved. Because I remember it was kind of maybe when, when I would have called them the kind of young, hot promoters kind of kind of and they kind of first started and stuff like that. And they were booking like my, my, my crew those days, they were booking my sound those days. Um, but in 2008, yeah, I remember mm. just before that, was when promoters used to kind of give DJs a book to sell. So every DJ is on your line, every DJ on your line, this was before shubs.com and that kind of things there, every mm. DJ would get given a book of tickets to sell, yeah? And those days there, there mm. were certain DJs who were guaranteed sellers. You knew, you give Celeba, Celeba was guaranteed. You give him 40 tickets, they're gone. Invasion crew, give them 40 tickets, they're gone. Mm. Man like C6, Gialflex, Dixie. You give them their tickets, they're gone. Dixie yeah? sells tickets and for dances he's not even on to Routed. <laughs> no, in, in, in 2008, 2009, there was kind of like a shift where so many DJs started becoming promoters and it was then like, you give like C6 a book of tickets and then come a couple of days before the event or when C6 turns up to play at the event, they're like, all right, how many, how many tickets do you sell C? And C's giving you back the whole book because C's been too busy the last eight weeks promoting mm. his own rave. Mm. Like he's got coming on. So all of the guaranteed sellers became promoters. The and reason, yeah, the reason yeah. for that is is because you're paying them a set fee and chances are if they're selling a book of tickets that's going to go past what they're even taking for their yeah. fee. So they're going to yeah. see the empty book and the big amount of cash they've got to give over to the promoter mm -hmm. and think, mm -hmm. I can do this. And yeah. Um, in terms of DJs, James, doing that, James, had, had, do you remember the shift? Though? Do you remember like 2008, 2009, where there was that shift? Yeah, I got into yeah when I first started studying events. That was the way it was done. You book a DJ, you link him for paper tickets, and then you'd see them at the end of the um, at the start of your event. And then it got to a point where, yeah, um, yeah, that just kind of changed. I think it's part of it was online, and again, like you said, part of it was DJs were doing their own event. So it would just, yours wouldn't get the same attention. Plus the uh, um, saturation of more events as well. It's, so when there's more events, DJs are taking more bookings. So mm -hmm. a DJ's not going to have three books because he's got three bookings in, 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 in one night, if you know what I mean. 
Yeah. So, but I think in terms of DJs doing events, um, I don't really have an issue with it. That's one of the things I love about the scene is that there's no blocks in terms of routes to entry. If you've got an idea, if you've got a following, if you've got finance, you can put on an event. Like yeah. it's so easy to do. I think all of us can attest to that. So you don't want to have that same opening that gets us inside and then look down on people mm. to take those same opportunities. And like C6 said that, yeah, a good promoter will always do a better event than a good DJ. So there's really not anything to worry about in terms of market share because a DJ is not going to do as many events as a promoter because then they're not really a DJ anymore because then it becomes a conflict where they want to, they, they have to turn down bookings because they have to promote, or they have to turn down bookings because they're doing an event. So um, I've, I've always been quite supportive of DJs that I work with who've come to me and said they want to do an event or they want to do a birthday bash or whatever. Um, I, I always try and structure it around them. So rather than me do grown and sexy C6's birthday or whatever, we'll do no see we'll do your brand and then we'll uplift you and put you on the ped pedestal because the bigger you are it's going to come back to me anyway because i book you so um i think djs who do events tend to be more valuable overall because if they're a good dj they're going to have a good following and if they have good events then it's going to be even more. bigger one yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense i agree that makes I agree. Sense. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem. I don't particularly have a problem with DJs um, being promoters, to be honest. And many have come through that have done a fantastic job. Um, yeah. And a perfect example for me, and I always admire his work ethic and his brand is um, Seth Pumbo with Two Two. Oh, you right. know, um, and every time he does it, it, it pops off. Um, so yeah, but it's funny because you guys were talking about DJs and the paper ticket. That's one thing I've never done. Honest to God, till this day, I had I had promoters. I've never had a DJ sell a ticket on my behalf. I definitely gave a couple of my couple of books. Never. Can I tell you why I gave you a clap? Let me tell you why I gave you a clap here. Yeah? Listen, I love you promoters, yeah, but I feel like some of you don't rate us. I feel like some of you don't rate us. You see that ticket book thing? I was one of the first DJs I know. To, to say that I'm not selling tickets. Right. Like, I did used to sell them. I used to sell holiday packages. I used to sell it all, especially for the promoters that are my friends. Mm -hmm. Simon is my brethren. So I would always go above and beyond for him. James is my brethren. So if James wanted me to do so, I'd go above and beyond. But then that came to a thing like, well, hold on. You man ain't topping me up. You ain't topping me up. And you know another, like, because this is what promoters do to DJs, yeah? And, I, this isn't, I never got you on here just to, to, to have a go at you, but I'm just, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just I just want to have it, like, these are questions. I can't speak to promoters at, on, mm. a, on a DJ platform and not yeah. give you some gripes. Be, feel free to defend yourself any way you can, yeah? But when a dance don't make no money mm. and the DJ gives you a discount, mm -hmm. you, or you say, boy, yeah, you give him the fam. Like, it happens. You lot, not, not necessarily with... I haven't worked with cash. Doesn't necessarily happen with James. Yeah, hear what I said there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm <laughs> James. Does, I said doesn't necessarily. <laughs> no, no, no. This don't happen with James. James don't. James don't. Who said the last time? You said. Ah, wait, wait, I, no, no, hold on, hold on, Sam. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Sam. Hold on, Sam. I don't know. I don't know if it happens with Stam because <laughs> me and my brethren's in it. So if he says C, I don't know if it's because it's me and him. I would his personality would tell me he's got his pride's too big to short a man because he mm -hmm. ain't big. But for me, I, I would give him a discount. But my point is the promoters, so this isn't necessarily mm -hmm. about you lot, but it's about promoters. So defend your um your your sec your yeah, go on, go on. defend your sector. So put on a dance now and it ain't gone too well. Mm -hmm. You want to get a DJ, a boy, fam, like, I know you said a bills, but what, can 70 work or whatever? Yeah. What, cool. When you have a dance and you smash it, why don't you ever say, boy, fam, I know you said you want a bills, but here's 150. Why does it, why does, why does it, why does it, why does it okay. never, okay. ever? I've had, I've had that before, I've had that before. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Like, I think the only person I've worked in here is Fats. Yeah. Fats, have we not always done that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had I'm just saying, and 
and I'll, I'll say right here, whether it's fat, whether it's nitro, whether it's a combo, like whether it's Ray Playhouse, ask anyone I've worked with, if I have a successful night and I know those DJs have contributed to it, mm. even if it's that extra 20 or extra 30, I'll make yeah. sure I add it on top. Mm. I always do. Like, I, like I'll me out straight up. Anyone will tell you that. That's like, a great relationship, right? right. You, you, you've set up a, you've set up a, a, a relationship to say a man that will go, they will go the extra mile for you. Yeah, yeah it, it, you see, but like, uh, sorry guys, let me just come back. And I, and I've, I don't think I've ever said this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop this here. Um, <laughs> you see, I have that relationship with that with DJs like that, right? And I love how our relationships are. But it was a turning point. And I'm not saying I've, I still I still look after DJs, but it was a turning point. And that was with MJ, oh. Invasion Crew. Because there was a time, Spatch, you probably know, every single rave that I do, oh. the first Bashman people that are um, our, our dancehall DJs that will always book on that is Invasion Crew. Toddler, yeah. MJ, boom. And I think it was Barfest 20, 2012, the one in Birmingham. No. Okay. Okay, yeah. 2014, Birmingham. One, the one that got shut down, basically. The one that got um, locked off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like, obviously, I get it. These mans have come from London and all that stuff. Like, I've never not ever paid anyone the, the money in it. Mm. And um, the rave's locked off. We're trying to, like, we're trying to basically sort things out and all that stuff. And then I remember MJ came, like, cash. Yeah, where's my money? I where's my money now? I was like, bro. Like, you know me, man. I'm not going to run with your money, MJ. Like, give me your stuff or let me get somebody else to basically sort you out. Nah, bro, you're taking liberties. You're taking blah, blah, blah. But the way, the way he moved that day, I was like, hold on. For someone, in my opinion, I've looked after and I call, like, my brother, for example, for five years nonstop, I've booked you guys. I've helped create your name in the Midlands and all that stuff. This is how you're acting. So it's like, I stopped, I literally, I was so angry. I stopped literally everything that I was doing, walked to the cash point, get the money, slap it in his hand. Ever since that day, I've not booked them since. Oh, madness. Ever since that day, I've not booked them since. You probably have not noticed that. No. But that was the reason behind it, because I felt violated. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I felt no, bad. I, I would say MJ's my brother. I would say that he didn't mean it. So book him, book him next time. Nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Until he apologize. He didn't mean it. He didn't I'm, mean I'm it. not backing up. I'm not backing that. I'm not backing down on it. I still got love for them. I still show them love. But yeah. it's just that booking you at my rave. I hear nah. you. I hear you know you. what I mean? I, I was that I was that disappointed. Oh. I, hear you. I can't really answer that question to see because it's not really like it's not really something that I, I do. So yeah. it's like for me. Whatever I agree, mm. whatever, whatever fee I agree with someone, like I will pay them that fee, whether there's one person in there or a mm. thousand people. So yeah. I've had a bench where it be when I like when I used to do a lot of the club events or the comedy shows now that don't go well when they flop like thousands lost, but everyone gets their money, like my yeah. reputation, everyone knows they get their money. And 100%. the only people, like, don't get me wrong, there's some people who I will class as like my friends, like family, oh. away from this, if that makes sense. Me and yeah. them are cool. So it's like yeah. people like yourself, C6, people like Top Cats, even, even Invasion Crew, Celeb, so many people who I don't even have a money conversation with them beforehand. Oh. Like I don't actually have a money conversation. So come the end of the night, you should either slap a money in their hand or yeah. I'll ask them like, what, like, what do you want? Like, yeah. So see, like if, I, if I've got a night that went well or don't go well, you can see it with your eyes. Mm. And I come to you and say, I, what do you want? Yeah? Like, you're, you're usually just look around and say, oh, all right, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a relationship. Never, that's a relationship. But, but that's because me and you are different. But I've never yeah. come, I've never said, all right, agree on money with you and then try and talk you down. I don't even come to you and say, see, you can take a 20. Like, no. I just say, see, what you want. <laughs> like, and, and you're told me what you want. Same with Celebra. I say, Celebra, what you want? Top Cats, what you want? Godfather, mm. Conspiracy, any of them, what you want? And I will tell me what they want and, I, and I'll give it to them. But this is more time because I don't ever have money conversations with you. Oh. Never. Like yeah. everyone just knows that everything's certain, regardless whether it's good or bad. Mm. Everyone knows, it, knows they're good. So yeah. I'm not the kind of person who takes out like, the violin and comes to know when I start yeah. playing. But that's so, what, yeah. I guess, I guess that's what I said. This, this, this is more about 
a promoter. So it's not mm. necessarily you. Got, I, as I say, James is like James is straight in it. Like me and James, mm. we have we do have the money conversation, and then it's I believe it's written down in on his gold pen and that <laughs> gets sealed up, <laughs> and then it's it's, it's secure. No matter what happens, you get what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> All right, here's another one. Here's, the, here's another one. Then, then... Actually, see, one second, one second, one second. I, I, all right, let me, let, me, cause let me try and ask your question mm. kind of in general, yeah? Like, yeah, just kind of, kind of, kind of being neutral, yeah? yeah? I would say that things have got a lot easier mm. for DJs and hosts or whatever you want to be than it was when, when I was coming up. It was a mm-hmm. lot harder mm-hmm. to get bookings, to get in certain places and, so, so we had to work a lot harder and, 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 and do a lot more, yeah? Mm. Like, I remember going out flyering for an event I was booked on. A, a random promoter just booked me, yeah? Mm. I'm probably not even getting paid. I'm not even getting paid for the booking, bro, yeah? But I'm so excited that I've made it onto that little flyer. Like, I'm going out at night flyering someone else's event when all I've got is a little early warm-up set because I'm mm. so excited and I want people to see my name on this mm. flight, I'm coming back from I'm coming from those days, yeah. So it's everything is, is is a lot easier now. But with any type of business, business is about it's, it's about relationships also. Right. So promoters will have different boxes, and what I mean by different boxes is like there's a box, and in this box is all of the DJs who I know. If I book them, like I have to pay them their money 100, mm-hmm. percent yeah. Then mm-hmm. there's this box of my of my, my man them my people them yeah people I know who will work with me they'll work with the thing if it's good we're good if it's not you know ev- ev- everything's kind of kind of nice yeah mm-hmm. but within that box of D- that box of DJs they might get a lot more bookings off of that promoter than the box who I just want my 150 regardless and if I come mm-hmm. out I want my 150 the promoter might throw a lot more work, work this person's way. Like, oh, you know what? Mm. This person is willing to work with me when I'm trying my new ventures and certain little things that I don't know if it's going to work out. So when I've got my, my certified projects, yeah, they're going to be on it. So for example, I, as a comedy, as a comedy club, I've got my weekly comedy club, yeah? Every Sunday at Hideaway in Streatham. And sometimes there's 30 people in the room. Mm. Sometimes there's 200 people in the room. It just goes, it goes up and down, it goes up and down. So I've got certain comedians who will come down there and just jump on the stage. They'll just come down and say, yeah, Stan, can I, can I jump on? Can I try some new material? Can I, can I bless it or whatever, mm. yeah? But the comedians who do that, yeah, and they, 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 they nice up the crowd, when the big shows at the O2 are taking place and the big tours and those kind of things, yeah, like, they're, they're, back. Back. they're, they're mm. on all of those shows. I give them more work. I throw more work away because they show me love for the little mm. small Mm-hmm. Yeah, the little small events where I'm saying to them, you know what, it's only a little thing this time, or we're going over there, and you know, we've we've never been to Sheffield before, so I'm not too sure how it's gonna work out. Can you take this money? They'll be like, Yeah, cool, no problem. Mm-hmm. So now I know when it's the O2 and I know that that is gonna sell well and I can give you a certified money, mm-hmm. those people will be on that show because you 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 were willing to lower your price or whatever not when I was trying a new venture. Whereas yeah. a certain other people, if I'm coming out of my house, this is my fee take it or leave it yeah mm, so I agree. so therefore as as the as your own brand and your own business for example your c6 it's up to you to decide okay cool am i in the box where every promoter has to pay me this or i'm not coming out or mm. am i in the box where i'm kind of kind of yeah. happy to work with things because mm. it's going to get me more in the future what, what we as promoters don't like mm. is when people take that box but then complain about it and moan about it and chat mm. about it. Like, oh, no, one, yeah, yeah. no one forced you to do nothing. Yeah. You're your like, own man, so say yes or say no. Like, be, mm. be firm in, like, yeah, be firm yeah. in your rules. If you don't want to come out for less than £200, don't come out for less than £200. Don't, don't mm. like, say to people, oh, okay, cool, I'll do this for 100 And then mm. behind their back, or when you chat to other leaders, oh, Cash don't like to pay people, you know, he's always trying to mm. undercut, he's always trying to mm. go down, whatever not. No one, no one held a gun to your head. Yeah, but all right. I think uh, that's in, interesting you say that because that's kind of how I structure my relationships in my business. So it's, I prefer to work with personalities. So the people who are in the box where they will work with you yeah. and 
you know, I'm blessed enough to have not had many of those conversations in my 10 year career, but there's, so for example, the first event I, one of the first events I did June, um, no, it was in 2008 and I got everything wrong. Only my friends turned, turned up and Chucky online before he was even called Chucky online when he was yeah. DJ Chucky. Yeah. He walked into the venue, first book in, never worked with him before. Walked in to do his set, saw what was there, walked straight back out, and he came to me and said, just look after me next time. And this was, there wasn't even a before time for there to be a next time. But mm. from that conversation we had, he is on, he got so much bookings because, because of that. So I think, it, I think it more comes down to the relationship you have with the DJ. If I have to undercut a DJ because the event hasn't gone well, I would... The DJ will get his money because I'll give him an extra booking. So it won't be a case of, all right, I'll give you half now and then we'll forget about it. No, I'll give you an extra booking. So mm. you end up making more over the long term, if you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, so, but in terms of um, topping up DJs, again, I prefer to top you up with bookings um, mm -hmm. because I think what the lockdown has shown us is. The DJs who are in the box, which Stamina speaks about, I'm only coming out my yard for that. I know a lot of DJs at the start of the lockdown were saying, I'm not going on Instagram live and playing for free. Mm -hmm. I'm going to block parties and playing for free. And then two, three weeks, month or two, <laughs> the lockdown. I've been doing it. Everyone's been doing it. So you mm -hmm. clearly do it for the love. No one's a DJ because um, they want to make money. They want to entertain people. They love mm -hmm. music. So I think those people are easier to support and easier to work with. And where I personally wouldn't necessarily top them up because they don't go through the eight weeks of stress and sleepless nights that I have to go through in order to put on an event. But I will give that person more bookings. I'll give that person more opportunities. If they want to do an event, I can plug it for them. I can recommend them. I can do yeah. stuff for them. So they might not yeah. get it on the night, but they will definitely get their value. Get it in the long run. All right. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So just to, just to add there quickly, I think the other thing as well, is that those DJs that go the extra mile. Because one, one of the problems that you DJs now have mm -hmm. is that a promoter will book you guys and you don't do any promotion whatsoever. Mm. Ah. Said, like, <laughs> hold on. No, 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 I'm good. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, hold no, hold on. Got, I'm, not, I'm, gonna yeah. you, I'm just gonna let you know. Yeah. This is a little war now, you know. Just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead and I'll, I'll no no hold on no but what I'm saying is like you have and it's not it's not every single promo, um DJ but majority DJs now it's like a promoter will book you you take the book in but you don't even promote the event and when I say promote the event you're not just promoting the event you're promoting yourself well, because you need to let the consumers know where you're going to be playing at like the other genres of music or whatever whether it's the dance djs the edm djs or whatever else they all do that they promote themselves they put the lineup they put the flyers of where they're going to be at and us promoters in the urban scene no in the black music scene have to constantly ask for a dj to kind of like promote the rave just let people know where you're mm -hmm. going to be at as a promoter i'm doing the job i don't i don't like i don't rely on you to do that for me yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. it helps yeah. if you're promoting yourself and you're letting other people know where you also going to be now you see when a dj does that for me like okay i'm like you're in my good books because now mm -hmm. i know it's like you care about people seeing you where you're playing because again festivals like when you book certain people on festivals, they have to promote themselves. They have to promote, it's part of the contract. If I book Jay-Z for Live Nation, Jay-Z have to promote to say he's going to be a Live Nation. Well, we we saw just this weekend, that? everyone mm -hmm. that technically asked, and I know that was in the contract, because everyone that was on that wireless connect just this weekend, they promoted, they promoted that. that. All exactly. the artists in yeah. the contract, you right, can listen. tell they all promoted it. I know, I know exactly what C is going to say. Right. <laughs> well, hear what I'm saying, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to, listen. All right, there's, there's two reasons, yeah? I personally, I don't over promote. Mm -hmm. I don't over promote um, because I feel like, yes, you're right. I'm building my brand, but I'm I am selling myself 
well, you know, <laughs> not that way, but no. <laughs> I'm, I'm promoting myself and I'm creating my brand. And so I like to keep my, my, my followers and everything that I've accumulated over the years that I've put in, like I've been simple as you see and as young as I look, you know, I've mm-hmm. been doing this thing from 98. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Are you lot are shocked. Like, what? I didn't even know he was born in 98. But, no, no, yeah? we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but so over those years of accumulating that, um, I don't feel like it's my place to promote anyone's event if promotion cost is not put in place. If you book me to DJ mm-hmm. for one hour, yeah, the mm-hmm. DJ rate has gone down because of competition, because of um, uh, promoters have said to me, I, I give them a price and they say, I can get very rare for oh, that so, is true. That, mm-hmm. so they drive in my price down by creating that competition amongst us. Mm-hmm. Not all promoters, but some, yeah? Mm-hmm. The, the, the whole game has dropped. DJs have been stagnant. We haven't had a pay rise for years. You get what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's, it's many, I can, I can oh, argue that. I can, sorry. Wait, wait, no. yeah. For many yeah, no. years, we've been stuck at a certain level, and that's because of many things. So if you want to pay me 150 mm-hmm. for an hour of, and I tell you this, but if I DJ your event, I'm not saying I'm the best DJ. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing. Your mm-hmm. crowd will be entertained. You'll get value for money. Mm-hmm. If you want me to promote on top of that and go and sell tickets on top of that, Mm. You've got to start, you got to start saying, right, if I go and sell tickets, this is why I stopped selling tickets. You want me to drive, I'll tell you exactly, there's one, if, there's one particular reason why I stopped selling <laughs> tickets. I didn't actually think about it. I used to get people to come and meet me, yeah, meet me at Brixton and I'll go to Brixton and sell a few tickets or whatever. But one girl was like, can you come to New Molden? I said, wow. to New Molden? Anyway, <laughs> I thought, all right, cool. She wanted two tickets, yeah? I can't even remember the event, but I remember that thing. I drove to New Molden. For this, for this girl, yeah, to sell her these tickets. Drove to New Molden. When I come back, I bust my tyre. I said, Rascler, I paid petrol to get to New Molden. Mm-hmm. Bust my tyre. And this, this is for free. Because mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. getting paid for my DJ. Fuck that. I'm never selling another ticket. That's exactly what I said. Fuck that. I'm never selling another ticket. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, man like Stamina James or whatever, the promoter, I would still do it because they're my, they're my people. Yeah. But the, average, the new promoter can't get me to do them things. No, I, okay, I understand you know that, but here's, here's, here's my counter argument. Mm. So that was the experience then. Mm. But now, as a DJ, mm. you don't have you don't have to drive to go sell no ticket. Matter of fact, I've never asked any any DJ to sell ticket because you can just basically put mm. up, put up a link on your Twitter or on your Instagram story that direct them to shoes or event right or whatever. Yeah, everything is online. Um, as a DJ, I understand the argument of your price going down. Just a couple of days ago, I looked at a flyer of Roadblock, right? We were charging 15, 15 to 20 pounds. This was, Roadblock was in 2008. Mm. We were charging 15, 20 pounds per ticket. We're talking about 12 years later. Some mm. of the rents, we, we still have to charge 15, 20 pounds mm. per ticket. Mm. The cost of the venue then, I could probably get for free or 500 pounds. Mm. Now you're talking about three, four K. Mm. The DJs then were like 50 pounds or 75 pounds. The top end DJ, whether it's super D, um, target and them bands at the time can get for 300, 350. Now you're talking about grams. Mm. So as much as you guys, your price is not going up. Our price is, our price have basically gone all the way up, mm. but yet still what we can charge the cost, the consumers, mm has stayed the same. All right. So we've been hit too. I, I hear you. All right, there's one more thing. One more thing. This isn't necessarily, this is another reason why I mm. don't promote as much, yeah? I got, I used to have a set of ravers, yeah? Mm. I would go anywhere I was booked. Yeah? A set of girl that would come every dance I was booked. And then I, or every dance I recommended, so anyway, I remember putting stuff on, on Insta and they, yeah, man, promoting the dance. Because that's when I promote a dance, I'm actually okay. saying, trust oh, me, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. go there. And my ravers, they, they were my ravers. Correct. They went to that dance and it was so shit. <laughs> they, I lost my word. Do you, got, do you understand the importance of that? that? I lost my word. 
So when I'm saying next week, yo, you lot, trust me. <laughs> Go down this wave here. They're like, trust you. You, do you know how much money I lost last week trusting you? Mm. That has happened on numerous occasions because mm. when you get booked, promoters want to say, promoters will see me at, at Grown and Sexy, Rebs, and see me post it three times in, in two weeks and then book me and want the same energy. But I trust Grown and Sexy. Mm. I know I can send these girls to Grown and Sexy even if I'm not going to be there and they will have a quality night. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, go... You, uh, uh, you know what I mean? They go grow the sexy or paparazzi central. Oh, you know what I mean? Go, go. It's mm. it, it's gonna shop confidently. <laughs> but you know, they, what? they want to book me for telephone fest. I go telephone fest and I tell the people. That <laughs> I said telephone fest. You know. <laughs> and it's shit. I, I see. You know, you know, what, you know, what the problem is? Yeah, here's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go on. Like, we we're in a we're in a professional environment. But sometimes business is still conducted on a bit of a, a wishy-washy level, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I book artists, for example, when I'm booking proper artists, like I think someone said earlier about um, wireless and I think Fat said mm -hmm. it about wireless mm -hmm. contracts, whatever. Not. When I'm booking artists, it's a certified contract. Like they have promotional obligations. Yeah. We go Same. back and forth, back and forth. I'm saying, all right, cool. I want them to put. They have to post twice on Instagram within a promotional period of the event mm -hmm. at my request. They have to send me a video drop confirming mm -hmm. that they're going to be at the event. They have to do uh, a radio phone in interview. Like, so all of these things are contracted. If they don't do these things, they're in breach of contract. So therefore, obviously when I'm booking them, I'm booking you to one, turn up and do your performance. Two, for me to be able to use your name and likeness. Yeah. Right. And three, for you to, post on your your platforms and four for you to turn up or phone in for certain interviews or or or, or live appearances that are going to help me to sell the event that you're going to be at. Mm -hmm. yeah now ultimately when 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 we're booking djs it should be safe somewhat the same thing that that, that, that conversation should also take place all right cool i'm going to book you for this event this is what I need from you. Yeah. Mm. And the promoter and DJ should confirm what we're getting for that money or what is the transaction taking place? What is the agreement mm -hmm. for this money? Once that agreement has been made, there can't be any argument on site or on, on either side. But what happens is, yeah, C6, you're free for this date there? Yeah, man, all right, I can do that. All right, cool. How much? All right, yeah, cool, bro. All right, send me a photo, yeah? All right, cool. Yeah. Send me a photo. <laughs> you, you WhatsApp over your have. Yeah. You WhatsApp over your looking photo over the flyer. Yeah. And that's it. And then a couple mm. weeks before, I see what you can't post up there. Like so everyone's expectations of what should or should happen are different because no conversation has taken place. Like a, a, a proper agreement. So, and I'm saying it has to be a contract, you know, but at least have a little conversation. I look at WhatsApp, like, this is what no, I need. I 100% respect like, that. And you respect say, yes, yeah, so I mean. no, so therefore, you and C6 might have two packages. You might turn around and say, bro, you know what, my, my price that has come out of DJ is this. But if mm. you want these extra the most service, extra, yeah, you have to pay this. I, I need That's that. Cool, yeah. What I want to do, just one second, I just want DJs to rewind this little section, <laughs> listen to that again, and just start having conversation yeah. because I feel like it will help the scene. I personally, yeah, I would prefer to do one event a night. I shouldn't yeah. have to worry about money. Like I should be able to do like a two hour set. Mm. You'd not be scared to pay me my value for a two hour set, but you get, you get a hundred percent of my promotion. I'm not going to split my night. The crowd that mm. do follow me, I can't, they're not, they can't come everywhere. I don't, I don't drive a bus no, like, and bring my ravers with me. So, like, if you want the best out of me, book me and mm. let me give that energy to that event. So mm. if, if it's a give and take, then I, guarantee, I think that personally, things, because I've had, I've had five bookings in one night. Oh, yeah. I'm literally, like, mm. running in running two out. seconds before, like, you, you've all, even J Stamina's, Stamina's see me running yeah, blood, blood, blood. Stamina's at the... Yeah, I'm outside, I'm outside. Running two <laughs> seconds playing. Same with James. I don't like that. 
Because that makes you more professional. But you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot a look at at you now. You know, see. Yeah. <laughs> ah, shoot shit. At you now. So James, Jameson, um. James and Stam were like, um, just going off of what C6 said, would you argue, and this is an argument that I've made some, for some time now, actually, would you argue that our industry, and especially black events, black ravers, yeah. as promoters, needs to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, Jesus, it was in my head a second ago, I've lost it. Um, regulated. Regulated how? Whether it's within ourselves, but you see, when you have contract, like see, like what CC is saying, like if I can just book you exclusively to have you for the night, and then I can have you as a DJ, and know you don't have to be anywhere else. Mm. I think it then helps because you like, like I, I mean, let's use Westwood for example. When you book, when we book Westwood. Now, I know Westwood, if I book Westwood today and he's playing a, 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 an event for me this week, nobody can book him two weeks before. Now, I think that's changed now. Nobody can book him a week before. Nobody can book him a week after in the same city where I've booked him for. Mm. So I've got him exclusively. Yeah. That's, and even some of the radio DJs, whether it's Mr. Jam, whether it's Target, this is what happens. So... <laughs> I, you know mean, what, yeah. I, I think it you goes what, back yeah. to what Stamina was it's saying it's, about. You know, what, Hold on, Stam, 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 Stam. Sorry, let, let James, let James. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear him. Go on. Yeah, cool. I think it goes back to what Stamina was saying about, you know, business. A lot about business is the relationships you keep, and I think our job as a promoter is we have to assess who we're booking and what we expect from those bookings. So you know, there's certain man that you're going to book that will just turn, turn up and play. They're not going to post mm -hmm. it. They're not going to bring no one. They're just going to turn up and play, but they're going to play so well, you don't mind that. And then you've got the other people who you book because you know they're going to plug it. You know they're going to get your brand out there. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of, we can self-regulate to an extent where if there's a conversation that needs to happen, that stamina will say in that, yeah, we, we have that conversation and we have our expectations laid out. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you have working relationships with people, they know what to expect from you and you know what to expect from them. So there's, mm -hmm. um, there's less likely to be a um, conflict. It's only when you're booking new people for the first time and those, you don't have the conversations as Stamina was saying that that's when you can get confusion. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like to stick to what I know. I don't like surprises in business. So uh, if I book someone new, my expectations are going to be low. So even if I book Fats and I see him post out, mm -hmm. Um, Amphia's event hard, hard, hard. If mm. I don't know that Fats and Amphia are tight like that, then mm. I'm going to expect it myself kind, kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, it's just more about being real, realistic and managing your expectations. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, that's, what? Yeah. That's a very I'm good point. I've never heard anyone do before. I'm glad, I'm glad Cash said, I'm glad Cash what he said what he said and kind of gave the example of Westwood, didn't it? I said I was about to fire a look at Dart at C6. Yeah. And the, the, no, the dart I was gonna throw at you, C6, is to say like, you can't expect like promoters to treat you like a like a Mercedes or a Bentley, while you're treating yourself like a Uber, if that makes sense, yeah. And what what I mean by that is like, you see what you're saying, boy. Like, I took this book here, and it's happened numerous times where I told my people to come to this dance, and the dance was 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 rubbish, yeah. You shouldn't be taking that booking, bro. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, if you're if you're if you're if you're saying you're a Mercedes or you're a Bentley or you're a Ferrari, you shouldn't be on that book. Like you shouldn't be on that booking. You should be turning it down. Like don't don't take the promoter's money and you're trying to hide in the background like you're like you're you're not really there, innit? Because when you look at when you look at um DJs like EZ, yeah, you can't book EZ for any and anything. Like if you want to book EZ, EZ will tell you where's the venue, what's the date, what city is it in, what's it, what's the event called. What mm -hmm. other what other DJs are you booking? Like yeah. EZ wants to know the yeah. ins and outs of every single yeah, but person. That's EZ who's, now, though. One second, one second, one second. Who's on that event in it, and what is going on? And then between his management or whatever, or not they're going to decide is this event right for EZ's brand in it? Because any event EZ is on is going to be listed on his website. It's going to be listed on his bookings. So does this event fit where he should be in? Yeah. yeah. So therefore, if C6 is a Ferrari, yeah. C6 should not be taking any bookings that he is not happy 
to list on his website, yeah. on his app, and happy for his clientele to come and see him there. Really. So if you're happy to take the money from a little pop down shubbins in a broom cupboard dance, yeah, if you're happy to go and take that money, basically, I'm talking about your event, the Ross Club. Well, it's taking for him. Keep his energy, don't take his money and then hide. You know what it is, you know what it is, you know what it is. Go on, Fats, go on, Fats, go on, Fats. Yeah, but on the flip side of that, though, Stan, yeah, I hear what you're saying, innit? But, but, he's in there, even if he does all of that, he can do all of that on the list, innit? That don't mean that this, the event's going to sell out or the event's going to be rammed. All of those things that you said don't guarantee the numbers in the building. Yeah. No, it doesn't. But it, so, it so doesn't. Yeah. doesn't. But at least, at least there's some filtering process. At least there's some filtering process. Yeah, but Stam, listen to this, yeah? When I was starting my Raven career, EZ, I seen him in some questionable places. <laughs> <laughs> He was, on the come up. he was on the come up. Coliseum was 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 the, the venue, but I seen him in Imperial Gardens and then Mad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've yeah. seen him on the come up. Now you see on the come up, and it's a give and take. Like we need promoters to help us get to that level. Ah. We need, and you guys need DJs to support you to get your events to that level. So it's about a relationship. Not every single DJ is going to help your event grow. And not every promoter is going to help a DJ grow personally. But relationships are very, very important. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, now, that being... so, so we have to now start to build relationships. Now, as I said before, as so, was something that I genuinely think, I think if we slow down, us as DJs, this, this is my, my section, slow down. The five bookings a night, they don't help us. They, in fact, they cheapen us. Our clientele cannot genuinely support us if I'm mm -hmm. in four places at a night. My, genu my genuine followers who love what I do cannot mm -hmm. effectively follow me if I'm just running around, running around, running around. Do you get what I'm saying? And I want them to see the best of me when I'm relaxed and I'm there and I can vibe. And Sometimes people just want to be in the building with man. Mm -hmm. You see the energy and man's there. Like, they love that. Because you see, when the man them are do, when the man them are invested in something, they love it. So the, all the weekenders and the party holidays, like I've been on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I've been on a lot of them, and I believe <laughs> it's because of the energy that I give. I'll, I'll, I'll play the early shift, the late shift in the pool by the pool at the beach. I'll play any shift, and I talk to people, mm -hmm. mingle, mm -hmm. friendly. You got what I'm saying? So I'm good for that event. Other promoters come out and see that and book me for their one. And man, see, rah, I see what man done, done for shutdown. Come over to rear it. And mm -hmm. I just genuinely, that's who I am genuinely. But I don't, I can't do it for everything, but that's just who I am. But to get the best of me, you got to invest in me. You feel what I'm saying? But that comes down to self, um, self marketing and your own self brand. Mm -hmm. And what a, lot of, yeah. what a lot of promoters are not doing, they're not branding themselves, nor are they marketing themselves. You have to look at yourself as a as an as an artist that's coming up. Um, that's coming up. Okay. Every artist, if you just basically just doing music and not marketing yourself, you're forgettable. Yeah. So, of like to achieve what you're saying, C6, it's yeah. about your own brand. Like, yeah. if I'm booking C6. What's C6 brand? Okay, is that DJ that's gonna be having fun talking to customers, but yet he's gonna shell down the party, and I know I've got him exclusively. Then I'm more inclined to book you because I know you're going to give me that. Those customers are going to come to the rave and they're going to vibe with you. So, yeah. but it's but about, a lot this, of this is the, not branding themselves. But it's the give and take because, you see, on the weekenders and the holidays, people see my value, innit? Mm -hmm. They know, shit, the Bashman DJ is not here. C can go and shell the Bashman set. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, my house DJ ain't turn up. CJ can, C can go and do that. The, the early pool party, I'm not going to rush your party. Mm -hmm. the, the slow jam set I got that I got it they, so they see the value and I see my bookings come in there even I don't sell packages mm -hmm. and I still get the bookings mm -hmm. because the man them know what I can give but you see in the raves the raves when you set the standard mm -hmm. and the man them are saying boy see well it's going to have to be a for, it's the, it, boy see but you, but, what, you know what is though, but you know what is though see yeah mm -hmm. like to a lot of DJs okay want to be they want to be treated a certain way but they don't believe in themselves enough 
mm. to go out on the limb, if that makes sense. Sometimes, you know, without big risk, there's no big reward, mm. yeah? So you have to believe in yourself. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't expect to be treated like a Ferrari while you're acting like an Uber. It's, it's not going to work out, yeah? So therefore, a DJ has to be big enough to turn down booking, turn down work. Like, yeah. go out on a limb and turn and say, Do you know what? I don't like these five bookings a, a, a day type of thing. So you see C6, I only take one booking on a Saturday, yeah? And my price for that one booking is this, and from that, you're going to get that, yeah? You have to be big enough and ready to take that risk and know that, boy, if I take this risk, like, I, I might not get no bookings. The promoters might be like, no, what, pay C6 this? No, I'm going to go and get this man for that or that man for that. Like, so how much do you believe in yourself to stop yeah. taking those five bookings? Yeah. But, earn, but earn the same amount of money from the five, from one, by going out on that limb and saying, I believe in myself enough. I know that I, uh, I bring enough value to this situation to, go, to take the risk and do that. And it might take a while. I might not get as much as I used to, but certain yeah. promoters are going to see the value in me. Innit? Like, until you as, a, as your own business and your own brand and your own commodity is, is ready to go out on a limb and do that, you yeah. can't expect like, a promoter ain't going to come up to you and just do it for you. No, 100, 100. And I tell people this all the time. I'll tell, tell you one of the hardest conversations. I'm going to be honest, yeah? Stamina and Alpo booked me for um, shutdown. Two of my brethren, I've known them for a very long time. I respect them. I'm like, boy, you know, like the selling thing, I'm not on it. But you see the, you see the, the fact that we had the conversation? They said, all right, cool. And we worked out our, our own deal. Yeah. And I was thinking, rah. A part of me was just going to do it because it's them. And the other part of me was like, rah, they, nah, they rape my, and they, they, the conversation needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, so they're right. You have to respect yourself. Then, what, then you say, all right, cool. You don't have to do that, but can you do this? And can you do that? And you start tailor-making shit. Because yeah. once, style don't suit everybody. I'm not wearing a one-size-fits-all suit. My, my suit has to tailor-make to me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You know? So that is where the conversations need to happen. And I feel like when it comes to serious promoters like yourselves, like we've all had, well, me and James have had conversations. I've done all night shift at James's parties and I enjoy them fully. And we have conversations and we, we, we make things work. And I feel like, you're right, DJs need to start to look at themselves as a, as a brand and come to the table with something. Because what, what I would tell DJs to touch on what Stamina was saying is, if you price yourself as you value yourself mm. and promoters say, all right, cool, I'll go and get someone cheaper. That can work. But any good promoter will tell you, if you put enough cheap DJs in your dance, you kill your, way, bro. your brand is going to die anyway. So it's yeah. like, there's no shortcuts to success and you, some, you have to speculate to accumulate. So um, yeah. for any DJs watching this, it's don't fear the young DJ or the new DJ or the bedroom DJ coming in at 50 pound because those won't sustain, those won't sustain events. It's mm. never going to work. You mm. know, I've been in the game a long time and yeah, promoters who do that don't last because the quality control is not there. And a 50 pound DJ has no following. That's why they charge 50 pound. Yeah. 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 And they've got no training. They got, yeah, they're, they're not training. good. They can't read a crowd. They can't mix. They can't, they've got no synergy in their selection. They'll jump to some genres and stuff like that. Like, I don't want to hear, um, I don't want to hear Ja Rule and then hear, <laughs> hear Drake. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like build it up, you know. Boy, Ja Rule gonna play Pop Smoke. <laughs> yeah, you get, you definitely get what you definitely get what you pay for. So, and it, that's very true when it comes to DJs, and it's very true when it comes to events. I mean, very true, very you know, true. promoters who do freeness, 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 they get a clientele that is not there for them. It's there for the freeness. So, yeah, um, quality costs. Yeah, I, I, can I ask you what, yeah, and I ask you not just quickly because I know that you know, um, have all done events abroad and stuff as well. So obviously, at the moment, we can't fly. We're not able to go anywhere. How do you feel that that is going to be affected, basically in the in in the future and at present? Obviously, we've seen them open up some places, but then, like Spain got open the other day and got shut down instantly again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, saw, I don't know who's doing this um, escape to Malta. I saw that and I just, I'm not going to lie, I kiss my teeth. Have you lot seen that? 
When is it? There's a few things happening September. in Ulster. September? Is it September? Is it no, actually no, before no. that? It's no. before that. Oh, I yeah, don't know. Second week of September. Yeah, yeah is it? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, why? 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 And Metropolis is involved. I'm like, why? 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 Like, Who's involved? So, but, but wouldn't... So, hold no, on. Let me it's, ask. it's actually end of August, um, Jane. But would you... How would you feel, yeah? As I said, right, for example, my party was the last party of the year. And that week, at that week here, yeah, James and I were talking and we were like, oh, I don't know, like right up until the day and it worked out. So these guys are either geniuses or crazy because <laughs> if it pops off and mm. the flights open a week before and they have the first abroad holiday, they win. Mm. So you kiss your teeth, but they're actually genius. Like they won. Do you get what I'm saying? It's only genius if it works. You're That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. It's, done, mm. and it's a fine line. Yeah. But right. that's what I'm saying. Everyone's living on that shoestring. Hopefully. I think in terms of international week weekenders, um, yeah, it's hard because just like what you were saying about the bipolarness in terms of your attitude towards COVID, mm-hmm. um, some people are going to be afraid to fly, afraid to travel, and not want to risk their money. And people aren't making as much money anyway, no matter what your job is. People are getting laid off or whatever. So I think that will affect it. Mm-hmm. But um, you're always going to have people that are you know, that don't really care, that are going to want to go out, going to want to experience things, like they want to be away, they want to get away from their, the mundanity of their lives. So um, I think, yeah, it, it just depends. So I do mine in Portugal, which Touchwood hasn't really been affected by COVID. But then if you go to, like I think you said about Spain, it opened mm-hmm. and then it closed. And then you've got this mm-hmm. other thing where the country might be open for travel, but not to UK residents. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's one of those you kind of have to see how it goes and play it by ear, yeah. Yeah, basically. But then it's hard to play. It. It's easier to play it by ear when it's a domestic event and you got three weeks mm. promo for it. When you have to take on the magnitude of international events and book flights and organize so yeah. um, operational things, it gets a bit difficult because there's so many stakeholders involved that mm-hmm. um, it might not always be feasible. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think what I think uh, what James said, James kind of hit the nail on on the head. Really, it's kind of you know this COVID situation is, it affects every type of of an event, but depending on how much money you have to spend to att- attend an event and how mm. much kind of work you have to go through to attend that event is going to determine you know all it's going to go into someone's kind of thinking process. That's why I said mm. people are going to the parks now because it's free. It's free. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. like, let's go down there like it's free but if you start charging them to go to that same park all of a sudden now they've got a, a decision to make yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. even with this covid thing it's like even if you did an event when events first start coming and the event is a 10 pound or a 15 pound and it's just down the road jump in the car and be there that's one decision to make when the event is now 100 pound <laughs> for a wristband 250 pound for a flight 250 pound for three nights oh, in a hotel oh. And you've got to take time off work and you've got to get paid. And you've got to money. And you've got to spend money. And, you know, and, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's a spending money, clothes money, different. Mm. Like, it, it's now it's a, a, grand, it's a, grand, it's a different decision. It's a different decision again with this whole mm. COVID thing. Like, so, you know, the more investment someone has to make into a decision, COVID is going to affect that decision even more, kind of like each time, because more money's at risk. What if this event gets cancelled? What if flights mm-hmm. are this? What if it's that? Yeah, all mm-hmm. those decisions are gonna kind of kind of play into it. And right now, no one's spending out any big piece of money on anything because the whole world is so shaky. No one's booking no flight right now. I yeah. think the, I think the only things that are going to be booked in the near future of that magnitude is established promoters, established okay. events. Um, okay. No one's going to give away, like uh, Stam said. No one's going to make all those decisions, and they're not sure of where it's going. So yeah, going back probably. to what C Six said about when he sends his people somewhere, if they come to diverse nights, it's going to be certified. Mm-hmm. Um, I think customers who know that it's a certified event organizer and a certified event, they'll be less affected. I think it's the newer ones that have come through are going to struggle, struggle in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I agree with everything you guys have said. I think, yeah, like I think um, Stam, you said it. No, I don't think anyone's got 1200 on average to be spending to go to just Europe um, for three, four days. Um, I think the established brands, whether it's as far as much as 
Afro Nation has had uh, um, a very negative um, um, response, or because they're ho they're forcing people to go, people are gonna go eventually. Um, whether it's All My Festival, whether it's Fresh Island, the ones that have postponed the event will still be the ones that probably be winning next year. I think any of the smaller ones, if you haven't got made, made a name for yourself already, you will probably then struggle. And also, yeah. not so much the, um, the smaller ones, it's the large ones as well with the higher overheads. Yeah. So you probably yeah. can't afford to cancel because of the amount of money they've invested. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, the smaller new ones are going to struggle and the huge big ones. So yeah. I read the other day that Cirque du Soleil has gone into administration and mm -hmm. it's not our crowd and our clientele, but it's still an event of a large scale that happens a lot. And yeah. when you see these big companies going under, it kind of puts everything into perspective. A lot, a lot of festival because um, insurance, insurance companies, most of them have not paid out. Mm. Most of yeah, them have not paid out. At, so Glastonbury it, are saying it, if they're not on next year, they might go out of business. And yeah. you know, Glastonbury have been going for like 50 years. And, and they're talking about poss possibly bankruptcy. Yeah, how have you not stacked up enough to take <laughs> a couple of, But it's like, yeah, sometimes you get too big. And yeah, they've, been the, lived, they've been balling year to year, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah years, exactly. Man. So they've been, way, they've been taking out way too much dividends, boy. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, so. that's been done. It's new whip, new whip, new whip. Ferrari. Mm. <laughs> They're the Ferrari. They use their Ferraris for Uber. That's about to do. All right, guys. Um, before we wrap up, yeah, I think we kind of touched on some. I feel like you know, said your little bits in it, but <laughs> rather than three, rather than three, we'll just do one each, yeah. Mm -hmm. As promoters, because obviously DJs, C6 has given you some of his little pet peeves with the promoter and so on and so forth. As promoters, do you not have, like, just like one, like a pet peeve, either with regards to the consumer or the DJ or the host or the venues or whatever it may be? But do you have one, like, as a promoter? I've got one as a promoter for promoters. Okay. And those, um, and for me, it's about promoters that don't prepare for the unexpected. Okay. Because that is that is the fundamental of our business. You always have to have a backup plan, and I've been guilty of it at, at least at one time. But as a promoter, when you don't um, prepare yourself for the unexpected, because anything can happen, mm. and then shit goes left, then it's on you. And I see a lot of some of the new kids that are coming up and at least, for me at least this is what i want them to hear and at least learn from that you always have to have your backup plans um and simple things like having a public liability insurance for me it's like it's it's the basic get it done don't just do a rave and basically for clout if you want to get into this business get into it and basically put your business out and if you don't know it reach out to people that can mentor you but little things like public liability insurance making sure you've done full due, um, due diligence on the venue and like security is prepped and know the kind of clientele that you're expecting and all that kind of stuff so for me it's about my thing is about promoters not preparing for the unexpected I, I respect that and i want to say one thing i've only ever seen in my opinion i'm not saying it's the only one but i've only ever seen one promoter have a dj chilling on standby Mm. Who's that? See, that's James. Do you know how much <laughs> to me, that's a fucking G move. No, a, that's, 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 pre that's preparation. That is, listen, he can never flop. Mm -hmm. mm. And it, a, a decent shooter at yeah. just there waiting. Yeah. Just in case. He, he created his own subs bench. 100. A fucking genius. <laughs> 100. That's a genius that's move. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's so, how yeah. it should be. So, your, so your one is preparation. DJ, yeah. um, promoters that don't prep. That's your pet peeve. All right, James. Yeah, unexpected. Yeah, James, what's your pet peeve? Um, I wouldn't call it a pet peeve as such, but I think something that I don't like is promoters, we don't, it goes back to what Cash was saying about regulation. I think we need to work together more. So I've done a few events with stamina, like really, really good ones. Yeah. And I think we can go away and do our own thing or we can come together and do something big. Bigger. I mm -hmm. think there needs to be more of that because what promoters fail to realize is venues are trying to get as much as they can out of us. Mm 
100%. Customers are trying to get as much as they can out of us. Mm. DJs are trying to get as much as they can out of us. So it's, we can't really be at war with each other. Like we have to have conversations. We have to, it's called collusion. Mm-hmm. All good businesses of a certain level, they collude. They say, right. So even, yeah, if you've got an, if you're doing a date here, I'll go, I'll go the week after or I'll go the week mm-hmm. before. Or mm-hmm. if me and Sam and I have the same event on the same day, he's doing O2, I'm doing revs. Then I'm not going to look at his lineup and book the same DJs. I'm going to try and vary mine, or we'll have a conversation. Oh, let me have him and you have him, and so um, we're not going for the same people. So I just think promoters just need to understand we're not each other's competition. We all a good event for me helps stamina. A good event for stamina helps cash. A good mm-hmm. weekender um, in for breakaway weekender helps shutdown. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, it helps. Um, Napa splash. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like most promoters get into the thing of like I need my event to be the best and better than everyone else, but we're all interconnected. We all pretty much go for the same people. We're like five percent of the population. So I think when we realise we're all on the same team, the scene will grow and will be a lot bigger. I respect that. I respect that. I, you know, I, I'm trying to think of like a little pet peeve or something I don't like. And I don't know. Like I think because I know the, the game so inside out. I was kind of used to everything. So I don't know. I think maybe the only thing I could think of that is kind of like, is that everyone thinks that our job is so easy at times. Like people underestimate how Mm. hard we work, how much money it costs and, you know, some of the risks that we take. So it's like sometimes, you know, sometimes people grudge us when we make a look of money, if that makes sense. They don't understand that the Mm. good... The, the good nights look after the bad. So I think mm. even earlier you said, oh, sometimes when your event is sell off, like, you know, sometimes them big wins and them big hits, like, yeah, are it. few and far between. Just balance out between, things, yeah. You know, mm. and you had a couple mediocre ones in, in, in the middle or you was working for three, four months straight. No money mm. coming in. Four months exactly. straight. Exactly. For that win. So you might think that win is massive, because you're only looking at, Rod, you know he made X amount today, but you don't know that little profit he made today is like his money for the last four months or the last right. five months. Like yeah. that subsidizes money. the ones that don't go as well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like sometimes I think people really underestimate like how hard it is, how much and risk we take at times and then grudge with us when we have a few little Ws. This is this where you get a Twitter accountant. Yeah, like, yeah, I used to get it all the time. That's it's the like, thing. wow, he's got 3,000 people in there at 25, uh, 25 pounds or 30 pounds on average. Therefore, yeah, he's, he's getting 90 bags, 90K, like, wow. <laughs> so it's like when C6 takes a book in from either myself or Stan, his money is guaranteed. Whereas when we're mm-hmm. making that call, our money's not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, like when we book C, it's like, all right, we're down X amount, but what we have to pay him. So, now we've ooh. got to make that back. Whereas mm-hmm. he's going to turn up and take his money. Mm-hmm. We have, mm-hmm. yeah, we're not guaranteed that. You know, yeah. sees, sees the liability on that balance sheet. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, people, I don't know, that. people don't know how it feels, yeah, to work an event, you know, three, four months. <laughs> you work in this event, you're grinding, no money ain't coming in, you're grinding, money's just going out, money's just going out. It comes to the day of the event and the event don't go well. Like the actual day of the event, you've got to pay out. Nothing, you're, when the, that's the day the money's supposed to come in, you know. On mm-hmm. that day, you're paying you pay out a two and a half grand in wages. Like, mm-hmm. And at this point, you know, this is all lost money, isn't it? So you're paying out your mm-hmm. wages, no money ain't coming in, and you've got to go home and say, did I, re-? like, you don't even want to be at the event yourself. Like, imagine yeah. being at the event. You've got to pay mm-hmm. money to people. You've been working on this thing for the last four months. You're going to go home and think, four months, and mm-hmm. I lost money. I, I come out of there three grand down, four grand down or whatever, you're working four months. So those are the kind of bad days that we have. So when we have a little one victory or a couple victory, like mm-hmm. people will allow us with a little victory every now and then, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, all right. It's so true. You know what? I'm going to say this here. I appreciate, this has actually been my favorite episode. He says that every week, isn't it? No, I don't, I don't. I don't. <laughs> he does, he does, he does. Yeah, I bet he does. He? I'm going to because... listen next week to make sure. The reason I say this here, the reason I say this because I've learned so much and I feel like as much as I know you guys, mm. I'm now seeing what you're, I'm not just looking at my brethren, yeah. I'm looking at what you actually do. 
Yeah, and it's I do a, feel more, that, more and insight. I feel that, yeah, it's more insight. And I do feel that if if we put into practice some of the things we've spoken about, mm-hmm. us as a scene, yeah, can grow. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, I I I urge my fellow DJs mm. to, to not be in this race for the the most bookings. Like, don't do it. Mm. And 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 I urge my promoters to link up and talk and not put on so much events to beat competition so mm. that we can slow down and entertain our people better. Because if our people mm. are entertained better, they come out, they spend more, they mm. and they will everybody will benefit. It do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we've we've lost the super clubs, but we've gained all these bars with hundred people, two hundred people, hundred people, two hundred mm-hmm. people, and they don't always they don't need to be on every single weekend. Let us go to the biggest club. Let's take a thousand five hundred over there, five hundred over there, and then mm-hmm. then the things like the the indigo can start to become a much more regular event for us mm-hmm. because we're not so mm-hmm. divided. Definitely, you know what I mean. So hopefully, like. We can all come together and have a conversation. And um, obviously, at Christmas, you know, I, I do this DJ Christmas dinner. And I invite all the DJs or whatever. But this year, I invite <laughs> all of you guys as well. You're getting the promoters, promoters then, yeah. Year. Yeah, I'm going to bring you all as well. As long as you lot don't have no inter... You said that last year and never did it. <laughs> I'm just there seeing the pictures. As long as, as long as you lot don't have no inter-promotional inter- beef and beef. that, <laughs> like, I'm cool oh, inviting you all. And like everyone can mingle because it, it it will be better for the scene if we know each other, talk to each other, and have some kind of understanding where you know what I mean. Yeah, because right. I'm because I'm looking at the pictures from your Christmas dinner, thinking all these men do events. Like where's like, where's my invite? It's mad. The only the only promoter ever ever to come was Stamina, but that's Stamina pays me on the day and says like, where is it? I can't <laughs> yeah. tell him. I couldn't tell him. I couldn't tell it. I was gonna. I was, half of me was like pretending that the line was bad. And then the other half was like, bro, I gotta tell him, man. That's my dad. I'm gonna play his plays both sides anyway. We <laughs> promote yeah, and, and hey, listen, I'm always I'm always always open to work with new promoters and stuff. I know my strength, and I'm sure all of you guys have your strength as well. Hmm. So I'm always open. Um I'm here. I just keep a low key, which is why I'm not so out there, but I do my thing. So let's but there you um, go. Look, there's a good collaboration right there because exactly you so if there's a, if the Midlands. There's, because, yeah, I remember Roadblock from 2008. That was one of my inspirations. Yeah. Stamina yeah. and Top Cats at Cameos every Saturday was one of my yeah. inspirations. And I think when we look at each other's events, we can kind of see we've influenced each other. Yeah, so exactly. Um, it's positive. Yeah, this has been yeah. a positive conversation. So, no, if, there's ever, if there's ever a conversation to have for collaboration, whether on a big scale or whatever, like, just yeah. count me in. Reach Maybe out, more. then let's, let's see what we can do. Yeah, and, book me, and I'll be exclusive for that book in there, yeah? Yeah, make <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, say no more. All right, fellas, thank you very much. All right, pick up um, yourself, man. All right, guys. Nice one, man. Appreciate it, man. Nice one, guys. All right, guys.